Hello and welcome to May the Review Be With You with Nick and Joe. I'm Joe. I'm Nick. And today we are talking about Marvel Spotlight's Echo. Uh, the first uh, of, uh, I guess, a, a little miniseries that Marvel is working on, Marvel Spotlight. And uh, heading it off is Echo, a character that we were introduced to previously in the Hawkeye series on Disney+, Plus. Uh, now with her own uh, miniseries, Echo, of course, starring uh, Aliqua Cox, uh, who actually is uh, a deaf actress. Um, a lot to unpack uh, in this five-episode miniseries. Uh, but before we do, uh, Nick, how are you? How are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, I finished. I finished Echo this morning. Um, had to. We had to change our plans. We didn't realize it was going to be all released at one time. So kudos to Disney for changing up their. Uh, they're planning there with episode releases kind of shocked us on Wednesday. We were like, Oh wait, the whole thing is here. So <laughs> let's make a different plan <laughs> for our episode recording. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, we made it work. We figured it out. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get into, into the show. And like you said, echo, uh, first, first Marvel spotlight thing that they're doing, which is interesting. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's kick it off. Let's, um, well, What's hey, the uh, first thing you want to talk about? The Marvel Spotlight thing, actually. Okay, <laughs> so, great. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I thought that was really interesting uh, that that they're starting that because, like, Marvel Spotlight, for the record, like that was a mini series that they used to publish like back in the day uh, for mm -hmm. like um, uh, just one off characters uh, that they they weren't sure uh, were going to work or not, and they would just put them out there in the Marvel Spotlight, which would be like telling the the reader this is a mini series just letting you know it's an anthology uh and you know they would see like hey do you guys like this <laughs> do, do you will you buy it we'll make more of it if you do um and it, it's funny because like that feels like that's what this is you know for anyone wondering uh, that's the exact sound of kevin feige when he's in the room that's exactly how he sounds do you guys like this do you do you like it that's how kevin feige sounds joe's met him do, anyway, do, do you continue. want more content we can we can do yeah. that more content that's yeah that's kevin feige yeah Wait, already, you guys my, like Guardians of the Galaxy? Whoa. That might that might be Kevin, the AI version of Kevin Feige, actually. But anyway, I digress. Go ahead. Oh, as you, you, mean, were. you mean Kevin? <laughs> Kevin, yeah. Yeah, Kevin, <laughs> different than Kevin Feige, although they share yeah, the yeah. same hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real character in this universe. Freaking weird, weird commentary there. Um, well, we've gone off the rails already. We're four minutes in. <laughs> Truly, I, I do want to make one more note on the spotlight thing, though, because um, like you said, they, they did surprise us with all five episodes coming on out um, at the same time. And that in of itself felt a lot like the show style that this was going for, which felt like an echo from like the Netflix like TV series that we used to see, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they drop everything, but like also like those shows were darker in tone. Yeah, uh, they were a lot slower pace. Like there was more yeah, of like I a grittiness to it. I found myself multiple times during this miniseries going, "Man, Disney is just not holding back with the with the gory and the blood here." <laughs> this is like it's just so funny to me to watch something like this on a streaming service that's called Disney. <laughs> like it's it's so funny to me. I don't think I'm ever gonna get over it because you know growing oh. up Disney is just like happy go lucky, like oh like princesses and princes and like everything's happy and fine. And then like I'm literally watching this, just, we're just getting our heads blown off. There's blood squirting everywhere, and it's like Disney Plus. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Right, right, right. The, the the same the same like production company uh, that you know uh, sings uh, a dream is a wish that your heart makes uh, is also right. responsible for watching like a man's like arm bone like pop out of its skin yeah. like disgusting. This is not this is not Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah, we've moved on from Walt. Um, yeah. No, never never entirely, but. Yeah, no, that is interesting. Uh, I, I would love actually to talk to you about that in a different episode about how Disney, you know, tried to like really like increase its audience with like these different IPs they've been incorporating. Yeah. Um, but uh, on, on a last note on uh, the, the Marvel Spotlight thing, uh, I don't know if this happened to you or not. And thank you for bringing up like the fact that this is on Disney Plus because I forgot the way I started this show was 
trying to figure out and navigate the Disney Plus platform on adjusting my parental control settings. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I guess, like, they, they came out standard as, like, just, like, PG-13 or, like, whatever, yeah. whatever like, uh-huh. at mild amounts of violence was. Like, I guess that was just the normal setting. So, like, I had to I had to set it to something a bit more extreme and I had to, like, that's look funny. it up because I was, like, buried in the settings. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I think I had changed it a couple months ago either automatically or it asked me to. But that's funny that you haven't had to be prompted yet to adjust your settings you couldn't even find it <laughs> i think i did once um but it was back when i had a different profile for for disney plus i think it was the first time that they introduced daredevil on uh the platform uh, okay. and i think i had to adjust yeah. it for that yeah. um but that was like a year ago and they've changed things and like it's kind of hard to find if you don't know where you're going um which i'm sure is intentional but still like i was like okay cool it's gonna be this kind of show neat uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. So Echo. Um, Echo. This is a character. We got to keep doing that. <laughs> oh, I will. Uh, <laughs> oh, so this is a character I I do not, I did not know a lot about. Um, and like I, I Marvel, I've been a Marvel fanboy for a long time. Uh, Nick and I have been talking about this stuff for a long time. This was an obscure one for me. Um I remember when they announced this show like a year and a half ago, I was like, I, I don't care. <laughs> I legitimately was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Ooh. We're all like, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Uh, I'm more interested in quantum medium guardians, three guardians, three uh, guardians. I can't, I, I gotta go. I, I can't speak. This is guardians, I mean, three guardians. What's wrong with guardians? Yeah. <sighs> You know what? You go ahead. <laughs> Continue with your thought. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I, I got you. I'll carry this. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to say that like within the first episode, within probably like the first like 10 minutes of the first episode, I was like, pff, 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 like in it. Um, yeah. I'll, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I, I put it on like as I was getting ready to go to bed and I was like, ah, just just so I can see what what, what this is like. I, I stayed up and watched the whole episode because I was like, this That's is nice. freaking cool. That's funny. So because you brought up your initial reaction, my first reaction when the, the, the first episode started, I was like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Am I watching the right show? Like, did I click some ex- a different sh- like? Because I had no clue going in what where the show's going to be about. And even if I did, I don't think I would have expected like the ancient – like historic opening that they did. I was right. Just the, like, the, what the is Chakta. going on? Yeah, the Chakta, yeah, I was like, becoming what? human. Yeah. I was like, what is going on right now? Like, what am I watching? Um, yeah, no, it, it got me right from that scene. It was like, oh, okay, this is not at all what I was expecting. This is right. weird. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Give me weird Very interesting. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a yawn. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed it is. Uh, I'm going to assume that that's not from boredom of this conversation. This man just no, worked no, no. out earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. That's how he yeah. pre-games. Apologies. May the review be with you. He Apologies. <laughs> goes out and lifts a bunch of weight. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that blood pumping. Uh, anyway. I, I don't know where I'm going with that, so I'm just going yeah, to leave gonna, that I'm right gonna... where it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, to just, I guess, encapsulate what this show is in five in five episodes, uh, you know, we we are introduced uh, to Maya uh, very quickly, um, and we we get some backstory on her, uh, which we'll get into in a second. But we ultimately pick up about halfway through this episode, the first episode, uh, with where we were left with her character in the Hawkeye show, uh, which yeah. is her discovering uh, that. Uh, uh, Hawkeye is actually not responsible uh, for, or Clint rather, Clint is not responsible uh, for the death of her father, even though like he did, he did do it, but it was right. her surrogate uncle, Wilson Fisk, the kingpin, uh, who tipped yeah. uh, Clint off uh, into right. killing the head of the tracksuit mafia. Right. Uh, and real quick, which, while you're, sorry, while you're talking about this scene, is this might be the first time that Marvel has ever done something like this. And I'm assuming you noticed, but in case you didn't, I'm going to bring this up because I was like, did they just do this? They, <laughs> The way that they introduced that scene where they like brought us back to the Hawkeye episode, that technically was a flash forward to a flashback. 
because we were looking at Maya as a kid, and then they flashed forward to the scene from Hawkeye, which technically was a flashback, because then we went to like real time Maya after that. Sorry, I just like I was like, what the hell is going on? Like it took like, twenty minutes. It's not what you think it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> amen to that. Time works <laughs> differently in the MCU. <laughs> I just thought that no, was like, that's, that's I don't know true, if it though. was clever or I don't know if it was clever or what, but I just found it interesting and kind of, kind of funny really, I guess. I don't know. I will, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, the, the rest of this show basically is uh, Maya on a revenge quest uh, after she's presumably killed Kingpin uh, to now take <laughs> over his empire as uh, the new queen right. of, uh, of New York, New York's black market, uh, which I, I have questions about that. Like, how far does Wilson Fisk's empire reach? Because, like, he's got ties oh. in Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, I was like, yeah. <laughs> just so ridiculous. Yeah, like, so, he like, just is he just the master of shipping. crime everywhere? Yeah, he just is the, he's the, he runs the country. <laughs> and, actually, we're not going to jump ahead to the after credit scene, but he might soon be. <laughs> so, let's get to that in a minute. But... We're on our way. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, so I, I guess just addressing what, uh, just a couple things, I don't want to linger on episode per episode, but just a couple of important things from that first one, uh, from that first episode. We, we talked about uh, seeing Clint briefly. Uh, yeah. I think the thing that a lot of people were excited about uh, was a a flashback into Maya's story uh, in which uh, her path comes uh, to cross with uh, Daredevil uh, with a return from Charlie Cox. Yeah, uh, very cool. I'm, I'm sure that was very welcomed by most of the audience. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a badass way to start off episode one. I was like, damn, we got Daredevil right now. Let's go. <laughs> right? That was really cool. Especially because, Actually, like, you know, he's blind and she's deaf and they're just fighting each other. And, like, they're n- neither of them knows the other has a disability. Like, so they're just, like, battling it out. Like, uh, total, t- such a cool battle. And the sound editing... And that particular scene, like that whole scene, right when the when Maya first gets to that dock, and like she like grabs one of the like lackeys and like cracks his neck. The sound editing was is phenomenal in that whole scene. Or just like I was just like, oh my god, like <laughs> Disney, like <laughs> so good. Yeah, they're they're getting a little bit more risque with the violence. Uh, yeah, on I, Disney love Plus, I love uh, it. I love it. Which is pretty neat. I think it's. I think it's. <laughs> Let's talk about that really quick. Uh, I I kind of think that that's necessary. Um, like, I, I think there's been this reputation that Marvel has been playing it safe lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um, makes sense. And we, we need some, like, riskier riskier moves out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if violence is necessarily, like, it. I know it is for some people. Uh, like, they want right. to see, like, gratuitous violence, right? Yeah. Um, but, like, I think back on, like, Avengers, for example, mm-hmm. and or even just Iron Man 1. Uh, where, yeah, there are guns, but, like, the guns aren't really, like, the focal point of the violence. The focal point of the violence is make-believe lasers, you know? Um, right. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if that's necessarily, like, the thing that's gonna, like, help, like, save Marvel, like, the violence, but I liked it. <laughs> right. I liked it a yeah. lot. <laughs> well, I think that they're kind of, like, checking the box for the people who want more violence by kind of giving us the Netflix Marvel stuff, making it canon, and then continuing some of those stories, basically, for uh, for the part of the Marvel fans that want, like, more violence. And, you know, not that I think I have a... I don't really have a preference either way, but it is nice to see the change up because it's just... It's just different, and, and, you know, different can be, can be good, usually, I think. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what direction it goes um but uh but yeah um a lot of flipping back and forth in the the first episode the first episode had a lot of like flipping back and forth timeline wise to kind of like i guess set up the character because we really didn't know a lot about her like did we know that she also was missing a leg the bottom half of her leg we we did know that yeah we did know Um, that okay i I did not remember from hawkeye if that was like part of her character already or not and i was wondering if they just like added that in (laughs) in in the hawkeye show we we see her put on her uh prosthetic leg at one point 
Yeah. Cool. Um, so that that had been addressed. I what I don't remember if it had been addressed, and maybe, maybe this is just me being blind and naive. I I had no idea that she was of Native American ancestry. Um, I mean, yeah, like I know me that either. they never like uh, name dropped uh, the the Choctaw, right? They they never right. said that, but right. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just me, just not knowing the world. <laughs> like, and maybe everybody else saw her and was like, "Ah, oh, yes, Native American, obviously." Um, no, yeah, I don't mm. think that that was hinted at at the Hawkeye series. I'd have to go back and watch it, and obviously, I didn't like look it up before this, but I don't think that that was known because she wasn't, you know, she wasn't like the focal point of the Hawkeye stuff. So um, there was a lot we didn't know, which, but she was intriguing enough. To warrant her own like little mini series because it was definitely a really cool uh, cool story to tell. Um, yeah, you know, as far as as far as flashbacks go, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about that because I mean that that is a narrative tool in in this show that isn't just like a way of conveying information, but it's also like a very important narrative plot point that flashbacks are happening, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about like about Echo's use of flashbacks. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, we start the show with one, right? So yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on like that tool overall? I think it's like, I think it worked really well for this, for storytelling. And they really like, it makes sense that they had to, that why they did it so much, right? Because like the Chakta, like ancestry is such an important part of Maya and like her grandmother's like life and like in a way like we're discovering how important at the same time Maya is discovering how important it is and the only way to really do that I guess is is through flashbacks and how it's actually affected her ancestors throughout the years and they just decided to also incorporate that with Maya's upbringing and her relationship with Kingpin and all these like scenarios and flashbacks from her her growing up and and stuff and so I found it like really interesting and intriguing and I think it I think it was really well done. Um especially some of those flashbacks from like when Maya was with Kingpin like later in the series. I was like, "Man, this is wild." Especially like that scene when she's this is I think in like the last episode or episode 4, but the scene where like she wants to get ice cream and the guy can't understand what he's asking for and the guy just like gets mad at her and like tells her to keep walking and then and then Kingpin just destroys him in this back alley he doesn't want Maya to see, but Maya and Maya's like 10 years old and, and she gets out of the car and she's watching him. And then she just like Kingpin thinks she's going to be freaked out. And she just walks up and starts kicking the guy who's already got his ass kicked by Kingpin. And then I'm just like, you know, Kingpin's like, Oh, this is, uh, this is the girl. Like she's, <laughs> she's going to grow up to be like the queen. you know. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, I love the use of flashbacks, like in general. Um, you have a, yeah. a flashback in particular that that was your favorite. Um, oh yeah, the this is the it's from like the Chocta uh, from uh, Alabama when they were playing in Alabama when they were playing this like um what, what do I even call it like this oh the game that they're playing school, old school form of like lacrosse slash rugby it looked like I, I I looked this up it's it's called Chocta Stickball. <laughs> Chocta stickball. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause the Chocta are a real like, um, civilization, like, uh, and, and, and group, um, that live in, I guess they live in Alabama now. Like they're still based in Alabama. Like, I think they which, might like, be a little scattered. Uh, cause like more scattered. I mean, if, if the sh- I, I, they might be, uh, cause I, I mean, if the show is to be trusted, I mean, you know, Maya's family's in Oklahoma, right? Um, oh, sorry, Oklahoma. If, I said Alabama. I said Alabama. I'm so well, sorry. Well, no, you you correctly <laughs> said Alabama though, because like the game, the game is happening in Alabama. You're right. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, which is why Got I it. think like it, it might be more spread out. Um, Got and I'm, I'm gonna Got assume it. that they did get this correctly because like at the end of the show, like they said that like you know a special thank you to like the tribe right. for like right. being advisors on all of this. Right. So that was like super cool um that and that game was probably one of my favorite flashbacks because it was like i I just love stuff like that and it was a yeah a game that i haven't like seen before right but it was like a take on some modern games that you that you have seen so that was a cool flashback and uh yeah that was with uh uh, lowak uh the ancestor lowak um yeah that's cool 
I for for me, I, I think um, some one of my favorite flashbacks is also a Chakta scene. It's a uh, it's the Tucklo, I think is how you say it. Tucklo scene. Um, it's the the girl who's learning to become like a sharpshooter in the forest. You remember that? And uh, like uh, a <laughs> yeah, 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 these yeah. writers yeah, yeah, show yeah. up and yeah, yep. that seems awesome. <laughs> um, also, I, I think that was the first time like I I understood what was happening. Um, as far as like those flashbacks go, because like even though the the low walk scene, like it, it happens right. Like I don't know if like you're supposed to be caught up at that point. Um, I don't maybe not. Um, but I was still a little confused as to like why I'm seeing this and like me thinking, okay, well maybe I'm gonna see this again later in the episode, and like you do but you don't, right? Um, but I I do agree with you that scene in general is like one of the most energetic scenes of the entire show. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Tucklow scene. Uh, she was she was my favorite of the ancestors. Uh, she had a, yeah, she had a and, dope look with that cowboy hat. And it was cool how they showed us that because they were telling us basically a story within the story we were already watching, right? It was like watching an old timey um, movie or something um, with mm-hmm. like the chapters flashing on the screen and like the limited dialogue, and it was that was really cool and well done. Um, so yeah, I feel like like this, the like the cinematography and like the sound editing and like I feel like like the the background teams on this show really crushed it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean the acting was obviously pretty good, which is on par for Marvel. Like, they, there's usually it's a, usually regardless if you like the storylines or not, it's usually w- well acted and it, and I think it was, but I, the background technical stuff really stood out to me in this series from the sound perspective and just the cinematography and like the, the, just the editing they were doing and story for storytelling purposes. I thought that was really strong, a strong point for this, for the mini series, which is cool. Um, gets me excited for the other spotlight stuff they're going to do. Yeah. Cause like it, it helped make it feel like a different thing. Right. While also still being in the Marvel cinematic universe. For sure. Um, that that was really neat, you know, to get a breath of fresh air while also like, you know, because Wilson Fisk is there and Daredevil's there, right? So like we know right. like we're still in the universe that we know and for the most part love. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was just told in such a refreshing way. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agreed. I'm trying to think what else. Um, what do you got? Um, I. So as far as as far as flashbacks go, just like as a final note here. I think like using too many flashbacks can hinder a series. I, I think Lost is a great example of this. <laughs> um, we we didn't need to know about Jack's tattoo. Did we need an explanation about that? <laughs> um, <laughs> like anytime it's, it's Joe can bring up, anytime Joe can bring up the show Lost, he's gonna do it. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. <laughs> Masterpiece theater. Um, <laughs> Um, no, Nick's right. That is an Achilles heel for me. But, uh... What the fuck happens next? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is some classic YouTube stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, that is classic YouTube. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> I don't think that this show really gets bogged down by it. Actually, like, if anything, I almost wish that there were more scenes of the Chakta. Uh, and, like, I would have loved to have gotten to know some of those ancestors even better. Um, yeah, you know, like like Lowak, uh, from what you were talking about, like that the the stakes of that game were like really high, like, right? Yeah. Like they were going to be exiled from the tribe. Yeah, like, I'm, whoever I'm loses, watch a show yeah. just about this. <laughs> yeah, super high stakes. Um, I I also wish I, I may, maybe not. I mean, maybe this is up to interpretation, but like the the Chakta like becoming human and like. Like, I guess that's, like, part of, like, their, uh, about, about their origin myth, right? Yeah. Um, I would have loved to have known more about that, too. Like, yeah. Like, what an interesting set piece, Listen, right, of, like, coming out the, of the pool and stuff. Yeah, like, that whole set piece at the very beginning with, like, the, the from their, like, origins, I was like, man, this is fucking cool. Like, and then we don't get anything else about it, and we don't see anything else about it, but, like, the whole show, we have this, like, there's this you know, chalked a power that only comes when you really need it the most. But then like, you know, the power like is helpful 
in those moments, but like it's not like some like superpower like that can really help you like defeat someone technically, I guess. Like it does at the end of the show, but like I don't know, it's kind of an underwhelming it feels a little underwhelming compared to like what the origin of this power is from where we've mm-hmm. seen it, you know? It feels a little this underwhelming, is a good I think, point. in the in the grand scheme of it. And like yeah. I was like, can we go back to the cave? Is there like a ruin? Like that would be like some discovering that would be cool, you know, and maybe, maybe they'll do it later or something. But like, I thought we would get a little bit more. It made me think of like the white walkers in game of Thrones for some reason, when that opening scene happened with them it's turning definitely into the humans. bright eyes. That, that gave yeah. Away. I was like, what is going yeah. on? Like, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I would have liked more about that. I, I totally agree with you on this. I, I think like, as far as, using her power or like connecting it to the mysticism of the chakta like i I feel like yeah we like dip our toes in that pool uh pun intended but like we really i mean as as far as like because like the idea of going back and using the gifts that your ancestors had is a really cool idea right to be able to access that library of skill and power right right? and like you have access to all of it that's cool um, I don't think it's represented very well with the glowing hands. Uh, that, yeah. that felt very Iron Handsy, um, which like I, I doubt that that's gonna be made a reference in the new MCU of things like that Netflix show. Like I don't think that's coming back. Right. <laughs> or Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Not Iron Hands. Iron Fist. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen that represented. Maybe like I don't know. I this is just me spitballing here. I'm just a guy. What do I know? Like some form of like spiritual energy like around her that like re- vaguely resembles the ancestor that she's channeling like that could be cool to see okay, I yeah, don't that know. Works. for a moment i thought you were going like you want her to turn into a super saiyan <laughs> I, I literally like, thought about an energy <laughs> like... I, I literally I literally thought about saying that and i was like how can i make this different than a super saiyan <laughs> yeah you you did well by by saying the, you know form of the ancestor but then you just made me think of power rangers when they morph into like their animal so i don't either way you're just <laughs> everything's I, I ripped, think, like, if, if, everything's if have, ripped like... from something else anyway it's oh, fine for sure for it's sure. fine for sure um <laughs> But yeah, that would be pretty neat, I, I think. Uh, yeah, the, the I way like that's that been here is... Yeah. Eh. Or really, oh, there's also a character... Oh, man, the character in DC Legends of Tomorrow. What's the character that has the am- oh, amulet? the animal, the animal pendant? Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. It's the same thing, it's, yeah. That, that would have been a better representation, though. I think that that would have been better than the glowing hands thing. That was a little weird for me, yeah. overall. Well, like, the glowing hands thing, I, I thought was a little misleading, too, because, like, I, I thought she was, like... Because, like, we first see it happen on the train, right? So, like, I thought, right. like, her hands were, like, I don't know, magnets or something? I don't know. Like, right. Like, I wasn't right. sure what was going on. <laughs> right, yeah. It, it definitely was, like, underwhelming for, like, how cool and, like, interesting the origins looked, you know? Um, especially because at the end of the day, this is just, like, a – it's just a story about, like, an underground – criminal organization and someone who at one point wanted to try to take it over, but then ends up like going back to her, like good family roots instead, or at least starts to, which I found myself more disappointed in the last half of the show, like the last two episodes. Cause like by the end of episode three, I was like, man, it would be really cool if they keep this whole, like she wants to take over the criminal organization story and like actually give us like a storyline about like how someone becomes a bad guy or a bad girl in this case in Mar- in the MCU, right? Almost like an Anakin esque like escalation to become Darth Vader. It'd be really cool if we get this like escalation of Echo to become the next Kingpin, Echo. you know, or Queenpin, whatever, right? You know, like it'd be really cool if they did that. And I found myself really wanting that to be the case. And then they backed off of it and they, they went the other way and I was a little disappointed cause it would have been, you know, cause like every story we get has obviously like a hero's journey and like there's something like heroic about it or some kind of lesson, which is fine. But this felt like an opportunity where they could go the other way and they, it doesn't look like they backed off. And I was like, ah, it would have been cool. 
I think you touch on something that's really important here, and that's that episode three, right? There is a a very big tone shift after the third episode. Yeah. Um, and it's it's the revelation to Maya that Fisk is alive, right? Um, right. Which, like, great cliffhanger. <laughs> Love right. the cliffhanger. But I, I think this really, like, it makes the stakes at that point, like, not that high anymore. Um, right. cause like we, we know he's not interested in really hurting her. I mean, toward the end, he kind of does an about face on that. Right. But like, mm-hmm. at least in, in episode four and most of episode five, he's not interested in hurting her. Like he wants to renew their relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas like in episode three, like prior to that revelation that he's alive, uh, there's this intense, uh, fight with the, the black knife cartel. Right. Uh, in the skating rink. Um, yeah. That scene is awesome. That whole episode's awesome. Um, yeah, that episode's great. And, yeah, the the character of uh, of Zane. Yeah. Um, I he's unhinged. He's scary. Um, he's quiet and scary. Like I really liked that villain. Um, I I don't think he had. I'm told I could be totally wrong on this, but I don't think he has a comic book co- counterpart to my knowledge. Um, if he is original, I loved, like his menace uh i i thought he was portrayed really well i am sad that he went out with just a gunshot to the face i mean it was a cool <laughs> shot i guess but like damn that's yeah, it <laughs> he needed to go though he wasn't he annoyed me he was like he's an idiot you know especially the two lackeys that he hired too who like have no brains but that's what you need from that show anyway right like you like the location they're in like you know anyone from kingpin's organization like maya doesn't get out of that room so it makes no. sense, I guess, but like it's just that was funny. I will say though, to to piggyback off your point about the you know once we get to episode four because we realize that Kingpin is now alive, the, <laughs> this was actually funny to me. Like I was laughing during this. Like Kingpin gets shot in the face by his like pseudo niece, who he basically raised and and created like this like you know warrior that she is now. He gets shot in the face by her, and all this guy cares about is having a nice Sunday family dinner. <laughs> he just wants to have a family dinner after getting shot in the face. I'm like, okay, Kingpin. Like, what the heck is going on, man? <laughs> it was so weird. And he was so bummed about the wine after she dumped the wine down the sink. He was I so was bummed about the wine. I was like, yo, that was probably a lot of money you just poured Listen, out the sink. And like, I get the symbolism, but like, come on. Kingpin, Kingpin is all of us. We're actually all Kingpin in a way. We can relate to Kingpin the most out of anyone in this show because of how he reacted when he lost Bro. the Oh, Yeah, man. I was like, shoot, there must have been easier ways to mess with him. Brutal. Just brutal. Oh, so heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. I would have disowned her immediately. I, like, yeah, I'm like, you know what? We're done. <laughs> that should have been the ep- end of the season right there. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no saving you. Um, you know, since, since we're on the topic, I, I do want to talk <sighs> about King Finn. Um, so, again, Maya's not a character that I, I knew really anything about. After this show, I started reading up on her, and I, I didn't know that uh, she's she's always been historically looked at as um, a... a um, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Not a daughter-in-law, but like a, a stepdaughter uh, mm-hmm. to Kingpin. It's like, that's always been like the thing. Uh, he's always mm-hmm. cared about her throughout comics that way. So like n- knowing that it now seems like, oh yeah, this would have been, I, if I had known that a year ago, I would have told myself, oh, okay. So this is how we're going to explore Kingpin more. We're we're going to do this through the lens of a character that's close to him. Right. Uh, cause I guess we're not ready yeah. to, to use Fisk as a central character or protagonist in, in something yet. Um, I will say like, it's Vincent D'Onofrio is great. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, uh, perfectly cast, I think in that role. Um, yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. I find myself not being as scared of his character as I used to be like in Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's because like, I've seen him too much or if the character is just written differently. I I don't know. What do you think? No, I think that it's more about like he became vulnerable. So he's not as scary anymore. (laughs) Like 
The second yeah. he was shot in the face and he's lying in a hospital bed, we thought he was dead for two and a half episodes. We thought he was dead for a year. Now, t- year and two and a half episodes, we thought he was dead. So, like, that's just the big bad, bad wolf, like, having a, a couple notches uh, that makes you just not as, like, terrified anymore. Cause he's Hold not, on, he's I got to ask you. Did, you. did you so. think for a second that Kingpin was dead? No, I mean, I, I was like, there's no way they're killing him now. Like, of course. Yeah, they're like, they but, just brought him back. <laughs> of course, but 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 still, you know, you get shot in the face, like, there's a vulnerability there. And this, because of the flashback scenes with Maya, like, you get to see that he does care about some things at a, a more human level. Now, he's also doing some inhumane things while caring at a human level, like beating the crap out of the ice cream guy right in front of her and then letting her kick him a couple times. Like, that's crazy. But, uh, you know, but but you also are, you know, humanizing him in a way by showing him how much he cares about a, a, a young person that he's then going to help raise. So those make you also not as scared because you know that there's like another side. So I think that that's part of it. Um and then he he got essentially defeated again, right? Like Maya didn't Maya basically beat him and then didn't show up. You oh, know? so and that's so... actually something I, re- I really liked about this show. So like they, so like I, I think the problem with like having someone like Kingpin uh, appear as the main antagonist in too mm-hmm. many properties is you don't want someone like that who's supposed to carry like such like menace around him all the time right to lose too often to the good right. guys right right um so i like that we did not overpower him right like we stopped like the goons right and right. we stopped the goon who with the rocket launcher good that's great right. but as far as like beating kingpin goes I, I really liked what they did with this uh instead of like beating him into submission right <laughs> um they instead heal him, right, for right. The, the trauma that he has, or at least, like, open the door to try to, right. like, right. heal your trauma, it, right? Which I think this is really smart for two reasons. A, we don't get to watch Kingpin get his ass whooped, right? right. And then B, I think this keeps the connection between Maya and Kingpin open. Because, like, the way I took that was right. she still cares about him, even though she doesn't right. want to be with him, right? Right, right. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Like, she definitely, she's still, they're still family, and she's, he's still, like, her uncle, and, um, yeah, I mean, I do agree, like, that was a great way for them to end it, but, like, it's still him being defeated, even though it's not, yeah. like, him losing in a violent way. It's almost right. worse that he loses this way, because, like, Kingpin is a violent person, and so the fact that he lost because like his humanity was like tested is almost worse. <laughs> like he, he lost because he had feelings that were like brought to the surface, not because he got bested in, in like a battle of a fists punching match. Yeah. Like it's like actually way worse. It's like, it, it, I think more humiliating for the character than anything. Like he's even less scary now. Like, <laughs> Oh, I, I, so I, you I know, think like, you're, I think you're right. Like, well, I, I don't know. I, I, yes and no, right? Like, cause, right. like I, I, I agree tough. with you about like why why I feel less scared of him because you're right. Like, we've gotten to see him be more human, um, and I also agree with you that this is worse for him because like we've seen Kingpin take fist to the face by Daredevil. We've seen right. him get blown up thanks to Kate Bishop Hawkeye's arrow, right? Because he underestimated her. We've seen yeah. him get hit by a car. We've seen him get shot in the <laughs> face and like he always comes back and he's like, yeah. is there more? Right. Um, so like being physical with him, it does not seem like a good way to beat him. Yeah, um, this is a good point. But the one character who could probably like reach out to him and like touch him right in the feels <laughs> uh, appears to be Maya. Uh, yeah, that's a good yeah, point. That, that was cool. The only way to defeat him is to get his uh, his quote unquote stepdaughter to uh, warm his heart. <laughs> oh, and I was gonna say, like, I, I think you're right. I think that is worse for him because yeah. of how he reacts Mentally. afterwards. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, like when he starts screaming at her, "What did you do?" Yeah, uh, yeah. His he, edge like, is he, gone. Yeah, you know, like he maybe. doesn't want to. 
I don't think he wants to recover, right? Like, right. He, well, his he identity wants to leave is the past where it is. Yeah, well, because his identity is, you know, been built from the childhood trauma, and that's who he is. So, who is he if he's healed from that? He doesn't know, which is worse Maybe for he's... him mentally. <laughs> well, it's it's, it's kind of great, right? Because like now it's a new start. Which uh, the way that this show ends, like, yeah, uh, it, it looks yeah. like we are going to get some kind of new start from him. Yeah, maybe he gets the idea to was it run for governor or president? I think it was it governor, was, right? It was it was it was mayor and mayor. Okay. Uh, I just realized that the show, the Daredevil show, is called Daredevil Born Again. It's about tell him. me why that. <laughs> it's about oh, it's, it's about Kingpin. Just described. Yeah, it's it's what we literally just described, right? Being born again. Like, who is he without that trauma? I'm I'm gonna be mayor. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sure that ties into to Charlie Cox's character as well, Matt Murdock. But uh, but yeah, interesting. Uh, two characters who will be born again, I guess. Uh, ah, that's such a great call out. It's probably so true that like like this episode was. I mean, this series was also about Kingpin. Daredevil: Born Again is also going to be about Kingpin and Daredevil. And Darede- Daredevil. Oh yeah, no, uh, wait, it's not. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Well, now I'm like even more excited for that. I mean, oh, dude, Daredevil is just it? such an awesome character. Jesus, yeah. And, and Charlie and Cox it's, is like, mm, he's great. So good yeah, at it. He's peak. He's really good at it. Yeah. Kudos to Marvel for doing that right. You know, they for all the shit they've gotten in the last couple of years, like kudos to them for making the Netflix stuff canon and then bringing Charlie Cox back. That's that's a big time move, for sure. You know, um, I've actually been I've been reading uh, this MCU book recently, and I uh, recently just found out how much like strife there was between like. Marvel Studios and like Marvel Television, um, hmm. and how Marvel Studios wasn't really crazy about like Marvel Television existing and doing things because uh, they were worried how it would affect the storytelling for studios, right? Right. Um, but like the one thing that they that they were like, yeah, it's pretty good, was like the casting of certain characters of Wilson Fisk, Matt Murdock, Jessica Jones. You know, they were like, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, Luke Cage. They're like, yeah, they, they got yeah. nailed all those. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I those are all to... great. Those are all great castings for sure. Like they did nail those like for like 100%. Um, How do you feel about Danny Rand? Which one is that? He's uh, the Iron Fist kid from Game I never of even watched. I never watched Iron Fist. I couldn't do it. Dude, I tried of, one episode. Of the guy. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is horrible. I never, I couldn't do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think part of it is just his character in Game of Thrones probably ruined it for me too. But, <laughs> but no, I, I don't know. There's something about like, I know, just not every, not every single superhero is going to be like a banger and like something you want to watch. And like, there's nothing about the name of that superhero slash that show that like, got me excited and and it was on the tail end of the netflix marvel stuff anyway right like when that was happening yeah. everything else in the mcu was really starting to take off and it was like why am i gonna watch this it's not even canon <laughs> like you know i mean now technically it is but i don't think they're gonna bring him back <laughs> so um yeah that's where that's I where am, i stand i am i am waiting and holding my breath for when there is some kind of name drop or reference to Jessica Jones. Yeah. Um, I love Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones. Yeah, uh, I agree. I loved that series. Uh, yep. Please, Marvel, please bring her back. She's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, uh, so we've kind of gone through the whole show a little bit piece by piece. So maybe like I'd love to hear like some of your other maybe like favorite like little parts here and there. And mm. I'll start though because I'm looking at my notes and I just I have to mention this character who definitely was like – to me, he was like the Ouroboros of this show. Um, good old Biscuits. Can we talk oh, about Biscuits, biscuits for a second? <laughs> biscuits rules. Biscuits is like, you just need like a comic relief, you know? And he's that t- times 10. And the scene in episode five when like, when Henry calls him and he's like, do you have a gun or a weapon or anything? And he's just, he sits there for a second and he's like, no, but I got something better or whatever. And it ends up just being the freaking pickup truck that he is completely souped up into a monster truck. And he's just like railing all of these like bad guys from, 
from Kingpin's like squad with a monster truck. I was like, Dude, what, it could not be more from on Kingpin's brand. Squad, a lot of people from his squad died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, right. got, they got their asses whooped by the tribe. Biscuits, biscuits with squished a, people. Biscuits with a monster truck is as good as it gets. You can't. It's pro- he's probably the most powerful, powerful member of the MCU now with that monster truck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Kevin will see you now. <laughs> Evan will see you now. Uh, anyway, I had to bring. I had to. I had to bring up biscuits. I love. Uh, he's such a good character. Um, biscuits is great. Uh, yeah. I, I do agree with that. Uh, you know what? So I, I, I have two things for you that that are my favorite, um, and they're both like. I, I guess they're both more like uh, show creative uh, mm-hmm. related rather than like character related. Mm-hmm. Um, the first being. So the fight scenes uh, in this show uh, are wonderfully choreographed, I think, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, some Fantastic. are definitely better than others. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the fight in the, uh, the uh, skate, skating rink, uh, I think that, plays, uh, that fight definitely is a standout. I uh, really enjoyed that fight. Um, but where I'm going with that, ultimately, is something that I really loved that they, they kept taking this into account over and over again. And it's funny, like, I, I love this so much more than Maya's actual superpowers. I love that the show kept finding different ways to use her prosthetic. Yeah. Um, like, basically, anytime she did a roundhouse kick on someone to the head, you were like, well, that guy's dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they did it a lot. Like, they found, yeah. under, I mean, it, it makes sense, too, right? Because, like, it's fast, it's light, but, like, you get hit by it and it hurts. It hurts, yeah. Um, the, my absolute favorite moment with this, though, uh, is in the first episode, uh, and it's when she's fighting Daredevil, uh, and there's this brutal moment where Daredevil is like, all right, F this, I'm going to break this woman's leg, and like grabs her leg and goes to like elbow it down the middle, but then he hits the metal prosthetic, and he's like, what? <laughs> and she shakes out of it. <laughs> that well, was like... That's the brilliance ahead, of him being blind, right? So he can't tell, and he's finding out with the the other senses on his body, right? And, then, and she's the, the shock. Uh, so so funny. funny! It's so good. Whoa. Oh, and and speaking of the sound editing and like parts like this that were really cool, the the skating rink scene in episode three when they're having this big ass battle, like she blares the music to distract everyone else in the skating rink. And it's brilliant because she can't hear any of that shit. And she's like, it doesn't distract me. They're all going to be like completely like flustered. And she's just going and, and like, she just goes and just destroys everyone. It's so, Oh good. yeah. Super the, creative fight scene. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, done. I love well that. Done. Um, actually on the note of sound editing that, cause that was my other favorite thing about this show is, uh, I, I love that there are moments uh, where the show forces you, I, I have a bad habit of like trying to multitask when I'm watching like not so much movies. I, I definitely don't do this with movies, but with TV shows, I'll try yeah. to multitask. You know, right. I'll be on my computer or something. I like that this show forces you to pay attention. You know, uh, with uh, maybe it's it's Maya is having a conversation with someone and they're not saying it out loud. Like the person she's talking to isn't right. saying anything out loud. They're doing right. ASL. Oh. But there are other moments yeah. uh, where where you're forced to perceive the world through Maya's eyes, yep. uh, and everything is just silent, and like you're watching what Maya is watching. Like uh, the fifth episode when uh, she's walking out with the tribe during uh, the yeah uh, during the festival, right? Uh, and she's like in the crowd, but like she's like looking around for signs of like Fisk somewhere, right? Uh, right. And I love the paranoia that you feel in that quiet. Right. Um, that's an awesome scene. Yeah, super uh, well done. And now that you brought up the the signing um, and everything too, how freaking like cool is the tech that Kingpin shows up with in the fifth episode with like the sign language tech where like they can now understand each other? I was just like, oh my god, this is like. I was like, does this actually exist yet? Because it's brilliant, you know? Like, and if it doesn't, someone's wa- someone who can build it is watching that and going, I have to build this. This is fantastic. Um, so that, that cool. tech, that was super cool. That tech is like, I think one of the few times in the show where I found myself actively disagreeing with Maya when she makes the point of, uh, you never learned to even sign 
Uh, instead, you put these things in my eye. And I was like, okay, but Maya, like, that's a pretty revolutionary thing <laughs> right. that he had made for right. you. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing it in his own way. This. Yeah, he's just yeah. doing it in his own way, you know? Yeah. Uh, I was like, I actively disagree with you here. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I wish that existed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he's yeah. also got some kind of, like, health tech because I – it doesn't look like he lost an eye. I know it might be a fake eye, but I don't think he. Lo- I think he's got his eye still. Yeah. Based on how so he's too. operating, and then he had that like at the very end, he had like this like crazy like. I don't even. It looked like it was just doing some kind of like uh, light healing or something. Like, there's some insane tech that healing tech that he also has that his eyes like totally fine. I'm I'm pretty sure he didn't lose an eye, which like. What the hell? <laughs> how? Yeah, right? How? Like, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> so it's like one of those things where I'm like, okay, Marvel, come on. Like, let's be a little realistic here. Like, give me something. Nothing. He's fine. Like, everything's He's fine. fine. He's <laughs> okay. Fine. <laughs> the, the last thing oh, I, I want to ask you about, Nick, is uh, just about Maya herself. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we go on definitely a roller coaster uh, with this character. Um what do you think of Maya? What do you think of her transformation into Echo? Um, I really, overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm still bummed that they didn't take the, like, she's going to just be a criminal, like, part of the story. Like, <laughs> especially because, like, I mean, it makes sense with the ancestry angle that they gave us, right? Like, and at the end, you know, she's like, I'm part of their family, not yours, to Kingpin, which is, like, a totally brutal thing to say to Kingpin. Like, when she's, like, the only family he really ever had, basically. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, she r- was raised by Kingpin, you know? Like, in a way. And her dad was always a member of the tracksuits or whatever. Like, so... Uh, Leader, leader of the tracksuit. Leader of the tracksuit. So, like, I'm just bummed that they didn't take the the criminal route because they just had never done anything like it. And I think it. I think this is one of like the perfect opportunities it could have taken. Now, granted, comically and like historically, like comic book wise, I you know you can probably answer this question. That's probably why they didn't go that route because, you know, um. In, in in the comics, she probably doesn't turn into a bad guy or bad girl, but I think it would have been a cool creative liberty for them to kind of like change it up a little bit. And it wouldn't have like been a huge deal to fans who were like people who were like such fans of the comics and have to have it go exact. I think it would have been a cool character to kind of like, oh, let's take it in a different direction than maybe what everyone's historically used to. Does that make sense? It um, does. Um, I, I I don't know much about this character, even after like doing some reading on her. Um, okay. I mean, she's got like way more content than like than you'd think. Um, but based on what I do know about her, um, she she is still pretty like a lot of her history is still pretty active in like street Marvel in like crime Marvel, you know. Okay. Uh, and being part of like that under underground world. Um, but if if I'm if I'm a betting man, um, and I'm sure that there are stories of Maya that explore her her cultural heritage, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm a betting man. I would say that I think the reason why we got this particular story is because this is the first. This character represents two different firsts, right? Maya is the first Native American heroine in Marvel live action uh and the first asl heroine in marvel right yeah so my guess is they they want to respect the tribe by like not necessarily making this character like a villain right yeah that's um, a good point yeah that that's that's my guess i don't know that for sure um ultimately i don't know where this character ends up in the great scheme of things in marvel um but i, I like you said like she does have you know the, this desire to become like the the criminal queen pin yeah. right she like uh, wants to be great and it's just like yeah oh it would be cool it would be cool it would be cool and uh, like her yeah. she has the comic history to support something like that uh, right i don't i don't know if we're ultimately done with that sort uh with that side of the story i hope not because i agree with you i think that would be a really interesting path to go down yeah absolutely 
So, uh, what are you, uh, what are you grading this one, man? So we do yeah, TV we shows out of ten. TV shows out of ten. We get to do a grading. We haven't done this in a while. Uh, well, yeah, since Loki, since Loki is our last time we actually rated anything. Um, yeah, out of ten, this one's tough because I did enjoy it. I, I don't think I'd rewatch it. Uh, it was really good. I'd recommend it to people who haven't seen it. Um, I don't know if I would rec- it to people, recommend it to people who aren't caught up though with Marvel. You know what I mean? Like if you haven't been following the TV, sh- the TV shows and like you haven't seen Hawkeye, I don't know if I'd recommend it. Um, having said that, if you're up to speed and you were on the fence, I think it's super well done. I really, I really liked the show. I specifically loved like the sound editing and a lot of like the technical stuff that they did. So kudos to the Marvel team for that. Um, I don't know why. Like, uh, I can't give it. I I, I want to give it like a seven point eight out of ten is what I'm thinking in my head. Um, it's probably one of my lower rated shows that they've done. But like. I didn't like hate it or anything. I really did enjoy it. I just know that I wouldn't, I wouldn't rewatch it. It wasn't like a rewatchable <laughs> level for me. And so that's kind of, I think where the rating comes from and why it's not in the eights. So 7.8 is my score. Pretty, it's pretty fair. Um, I'm going to probably going to go with like a, I think I'm going to give this show a seven five. I think overall, uh, overall it's pretty good. Uh, it definitely kept my interest all the way through. It helps that I came into this show with low expectations. Um, <laughs> and I, I think they they surpassed pretty much most of my expectations. My only disappointment comes from them introducing really interesting things and then not doing a lot with them, uh, such as like right. the ancestry stuff, right? Um, yeah. I think the climax, I think the way the climax resolves with Kingpin and healing him, I think that's brilliant. I think just before that, when they're doing like the powers and passing them on to uh, her family, I didn't think that that was done very well. Um, yeah, I, I thought was that like, could have been a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote for that scene. I wrote down. I was like, "What the fuck? Really? Everyone has powers now? Come on!" <laughs> like, yeah, right. Really it's like, my no, notes no, like, I'm like, "Come on, guys." There's there's, there's <laughs> precedent for it, but like, uh, uh, come on, like, yeah, this is uh, not exciting. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it just wasn't that cool of a, a last fight. I gotta admit. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. If you're going to watch this, you should probably be at least up to date with Hawkeye. Um, if you have any love for the Netflix uh, Marvel stuff and you miss that, this show is for you. Uh, this yeah. is very much like a callback to that yeah. style of Marvel storytelling. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm um, overall yeah. seven five. Nice. All right, cool. Yeah, we're pretty in line. That's pretty, pretty uh, in line, which is which is cool. Um, hell yeah, that's it. Look at us. That's it. That's, so, that's an episode. Uh, next time, yeah, next time uh, we talk, we are going to be talking about uh, the first movie of our time travel draft, uh, which is super exciting. Uh, did we come to a decision on what our first one's going to be? Uh, 12 Monkeys, because you're going to go see it at the theater. Your local theater yeah, is like, actually so showing it. playing at my local theater, which yeah. is crazy. So cool. Yeah. So we'll do 12 yeah. Monkeys. I've never seen it anyway, so that'll be cool. I'll have to watch that at some point in the next week or two. And um, yeah, that'll be the next thing we do. And then Marvel-wise... What's next? Uh, Dude, so I, I looked this up. Oh, wait. So Madam wild. Web is next. Isn't Madam Web oh, yeah. next? So, so it is, but like it's a Sony property thing. Uh, which, I mean, like mm. we're still going to watch it, but like MCU mm. stuff, it's going to be a while until the next MCU thing. Uh, really? I think it's at Agatha, and Agatha's not until August. Oh, well, good thing we have this time travel draft stuff to do. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just in time. Uh, what's, is there some- so, in the meantime, we'll, we'll lay it to rest there. Uh, Thank you all so much uh, for sticking with us. And as always, may the review be with you. Peace. Is there, is the pause always intentional or is there like a moment where you forget to actually say it? No, I just, I just choose how long I want to pause, but it's intentional. (laughs)